Long before tanks crossed the border, Russia appears to have been attacking Ukraine with cyber warfare techniques. But why would Russia start their war this way? In this video, we will look at those cyber attacks, the reason behind them, and the techniques the hackers used. Even if you do know the difference between a DOS attack and a DDoS attack, you may not know what the hermetic wiper is, so we'll look at that too. I'll also go through another attack vector being employed by the Russians. Hello there, you absolute legend. My name's Darren, and this is Cyberzar. Sophisticated malware has been found on hundreds of Ukrainian computers and has been sitting there undetected since the 28th of December, 2021. The malware went undetected until Wednesday, 23rd of February, the day of the invasion. Websites of several Ukrainian banks and government departments became inaccessible. This is the third such attack Ukraine has endured this year alone. Malware is malicious software that is surreptitiously installed onto computers with the intent to cause disruption or gain access to the system. But why would taking a website offline for a few hours be beneficial to Russia? When a country attacks another country, it can use a technique called FUD, fear, uncertainty and doubt. This is used to influence opinion, spread negative or false information and to obviously cause fear amongst people. So what else is dependent upon the internet apart from websites? Well. Large parts of a country's infrastructure rely on it too. People rely heavily on the internet for information and communication, especially during a crisis. Hybrid warfare techniques combine cyber attacks with traditional military activity. DDoS attacks hit Georgia in 2008 and Crimea in 2014 at the same time that they were being invaded. So what is a DOS attack? A DOS attack is a denial of service attack. This is where one computer attempts to flood another computer with traffic. The receiving computer cannot handle all of the incoming requests, so it may slow down or become completely unresponsive. Imagine somebody asking you lots of maths questions. If those maths questions came in really quickly, you wouldn't be able to keep up. You would become overwhelmed. Now, a DDoS attack is a distributed denial of service attack. This works in a similar way to a DOS attack, but this time you have many computers trying to flood the server with requests. The attacking computers may either be willing accomplices, which can happen in attacks by hacktivists or groups sponsored by nation states, or they could be unwitting victims whose machines have become infected with malware. These machines are called zombies. A wiper attack, like the ones used against Ukraine, is designed to wipe data from the target computer rather than trying to take it over or hold the data for ransom. But that's not the only attack vector Russia have been trying to use. The biggest strength of the internet is that you can access content located on a computer anywhere in the world. For that information to get from that computer to yours, it may have to travel halfway across the globe, crossing many borders and vast oceans. How do you get data across a large expanse of water? You simply connect countries by putting extremely long cables under the sea. You can see the location of submarine cables on various websites, such as this one. It would appear Russia have been trying to sabotage these cables by sending submarines out to damage them. If they are damaged or taken out, it can substantially slow down a country's internet access or take it out completely. For example, Tonga have just got their internet access back after a five week outage following a horrific natural disaster. There are multiple examples of countries losing service due to damage to submarine cables. Redundancy can be built into the system by laying two cables between countries. So if one of them falls over, the other one can take the load. Or by having multiple cables to different countries. Some remote nations like Tonga do not have that benefit. If you found this video useful, a great way of providing feedback is to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. You may be interested in some other videos I have done too. 